Hello, Peter. I don't even know who you are. Mmm, what about that guy? Pizza time. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. Real quick, I just want to go ahead and say thank you guys who have been supporting my channel the past couple of days. It has been such an exciting time with the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer out. And you guys have been really awesome with supporting my trailer reaction, my trailer breakdown, my theory videos, and continuing to watch me talk about more movie news. Just thank you for everybody doing that because I feel real burnt out from making all that content. And just seeing the endless amount of support means a lot to me. So enough of me being mushy. We have so much movie news to get to, so let's talk about it. But seriously, this is one fact that juicy side flick because while we still have CinemaCon currently going on in Las Vegas, the panels for both Warner Brothers and Sony Pictures went ahead and revealed a lot of cool details for upcoming movies. Some of the stuff we're going to be talking about here is the new Batman footage they showcase, footage of The Matrix, footage of Uncharted, Sony revealing their new Spider-Man universe and what it could mean. That along with so much more, so I'm going to need you guys to smash that like button for this fat juicy side flick. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, we're going to be talking a lot more about CinemaCon because we have other panels coming up the next couple of days. All right, so real quick before we get into the CinemaCon stuff, let's talk about some movie news that happened outside of that because we just got announced a new Smurf movie. In an interview with the president and CEO of Kid Entertainment at Viacom, he went ahead and revealed a couple of movies that are in the works with Paramount. One, he mentioned, of course, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie that is going to be animated and produced with Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg. Really looking forward to what that could be. But then he went ahead and also mentioned that they're working on a new theatrical Smurf movie. Now, I don't know about you, but it feels like every time the Smurfs are put on screen, it just does not turn out the way they intended. I feel like Smurf was one of those movies that set the trend that, oh, you know this cartoon from your childhood? Let's throw them into the real world in New York and have them do things they never did in the cartoon. No other details were given on whether it's going to be a fully CGI animated movie like the recent one they did, or if it'll be a live action hybrid like the one with Neil Patrick Harris. And the other one that really shouldn't be surprised, they also said another Another Spongebob movie is in the works. With the last Spongebob movie that I actually still need to go ahead and watch, that went ahead and premiered on Paramount Plus just because of the pandemic and they couldn't get it to theaters. It looks like they missed the Bikini Bottom boat on that one and want another shot of a movie. Now I do want to say this could be the solo Sandy Cheeks movie that they're planning and maybe he just referred to it as the new Spongebob movie. Just want to clarify that in case that's what he meant and it's not necessarily a new Spongebob movie but it's the solo spin-off movie with Sandy Cheeks. From those movies that Paramount is mentioning that they want to bring to the big screen, how are you feeling about it? Now getting on to the CinemaCon stuff that is happening right now. A lot of exciting things, of course, because of CinemaCon. We got our first look at the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer, so thank them CinemaCon gods. But other cool things were revealed there, like for one, people who attended CinemaCon got to see Ghostbusters Afterlife, and we have the first reactions. The first reactions for Ghostbusters Afterlife are out, and they seem to be overwhelmingly positive. Just reading a couple for you right off the bat. Ghostbusters Afterlife is the Ghostbusters sequel that I have been waiting all my life to see. It is nostalgia done right. A perfect blend of classic Ghostbuster moments with a fresh and unique twist for a whole new generation to enjoy. I got goosebumps. One that I thought was kind of awesome here is Ghostbusters Afterlife was great. As someone who wasn't a massive fan of Ghostbusters, I had so much fun even without understanding the references. A ton of heart with a great cast. New and old fans are going to love it. Stay through the credits. So we got a post credit scene in Ghostbusters Afterlife. This makes me really pumped to see the movie. And if you've been a fan of Ghostbusters, you know there's been a lot of toxicity. And the Ghostbusters community could use a win. And this looks like it's going to be it. Do these early reactions for Ghostbusters is Afterlife get you excited. From there, Sony went ahead and showed footage from some of their upcoming movies. Now, I will say CinemaCon is very protective and private. So no, unfortunately, we don't have any leaks of the footage, but we do have very detailed descriptions that should give you an idea of what to expect. So with the upcoming Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg movie Uncharted, this is what they were shown. We saw Sully in a suit sitting down and asking Drake if he'd like the chance to see things he'd only read about in books. So obviously the film takes place early in Drake. Drake's adventuring career that leads to a few shots that were very recognizable from the games. One look lifted almost exactly from Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, of Drake standing in a dark water-filled cave with a pirate ship at the end. Next, we see him on a plane getting stuck in a huge piece of cargo and getting yanked off into the air. The camera follows Drake in full freefall as he tries to grab onto something and save himself. Game fans will recall this setup from Uncharted 3, Drake 
breaks deception. That to me makes the footage sound really ambitious and like they're going all out with this action film. Other people describe the movie looking like a mix between Indiana Jones and Jumanji, which I think is a real in-between there. But the fact that they're pulling scenes directly from the video game into the movie should let you know they're trying their best to make this faithful for the fans. Does this Uncharted footage get you excited to finally see it eventually? The other big thing that Sony went ahead and revealed at this panel is their new Spider-Man universe that gets a brand new title. Now obviously you know that Sony and Marvel have this deal where they have joint custody of my boy Tom Holland Spider-Man where he can jump into the MCU but they can also go ahead and use Spider-Man characters to make solo movies. That's why we have the upcoming Morbius, the two Venom movies, and they even have a Craven the Hunter movie in the works with Aaron Taylor Johnson. And since this technically was separate from the MCU, Sony had their own name that I always thought was terrible named the Sony Picture Universe of Marvel characters, or Spumic for short. Well now at the presentation they went ahead and revealed a new title kind of hinting at the direction they're going towards. They have it here, during their presentation at this year's CinemaCon, Sony revealed that their collection of Spider-Man inspired films would be called Sony Spider-Man Universe. Although Peter Parker's alter ego is named in the title, it's unclear whether or not the original Spider-Man himself will make an appearance in any of the upcoming SSU films. That being said, it's possible that the highly publicized rights fiasco between between Disney and Sony resulted in a compromise that would allow the iconic superhero to show up in both franchises. So now that this separate Sony universe that can be accessed into the MCU through a little multiverse portal is called Sony's Spider-Man universe, you can't call your universe that without having Spider-Man show up in either Venom, Morbius, Craven, or whatever other movie they have in the works. That seems like what they could do, but my honest opinion, I would rather it be Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield to be the Spider-Man of the Sony Spider-Man universe. We'll have to wait and see on that, but it's also worth mentioning that there were reports coming out that Venom is looking to be delayed once again to the year 2022, taking the date that Morbius had. Now again, as of me making this video and posting it, it is only reported, so it's not official, it hasn't happened yet, but Sony's really considering it, and you know what? I think it's gonna happen, and I also think it's kind of smart of them. You saw the huge buzz that the Spider-Man No Way Home trailer had and how much everyone is talking about it. Once that movie comes out, and literally a month later, you have Venom 2, another Spider-Man character, there's gonna be some pour over and spill over where general audiences don't know the difference and just know, oh, that's a Spider-Man character. I just saw a great Spider-Man movie. Let me see that. And now Venom would have the potential to earn a lot more money because it's coming after that hype train of watching Spider-Man No Way Home. But keep your eyes out because it's not official as of right now, still coming out in October. From there, we move on to the Warner Brothers panel that happened at CinemaCon. Now, I was hoping a lot of stuff to come out here, but it kind of makes sense that they didn't reveal too much because they're saving all their big reveals for DC fandom come this October. What they did go ahead and reveal, though, is some footage and the official title for The Matrix 4, starring Keanu Reeves. Now, I'll be honest with you, this description is very detailed and long, so bear with me and get your fantasy brain going, because this is the first footage that they showed of The Matrix. It begins with a very glossy looking city. A psychiatrist, Neil Patrick Harris, is sitting with a patient named Thomas. Thomas is Keanu Reeves, and he's having problems. He says he's having dreams that aren't quite dreams. We see him walking down the street with green Matrix code. Am I crazy, he asks. We don't say that, the doctor replies. Thomas is then sitting in a bathtub with a rubber duck on his head. He walks into a coffee shop and greets Trinity. Have we met, she asks, as they shake hands. We see that Thomas is taking blue pills at home. He looks into the sky and watches a bunch of birds flying. He's trying to analyze it. Next, he's in an elevator with a bunch of people on their phones, and he's looking up at their reflection of everyone looking at screens. About here is where the song White Rabbit begins playing. Yahaba Abdul Mateen II shows up as a character who looks just like Morpheus, shaved head, tiny sunglasses, and obviously younger, and offers Thomas a red pill. He meets a person with blue hair who has a tattoo of a rabbit. This all feels very familiar to us, the audience, because this is kind of just the Matrix again. Neo and the person with blue hair walk through a mirror. He's in a cafe, then he's in a very serene dojo, which is on a lake with Mateen's character. The only thing that matters to you is still here, he says. You'll never give up. They begin to perform martial arts, and when Thomas hits Abdul Mateen's character hard in the chest, he flies out of the room. 
Thomas holds bullets in the air. A helicopter fires a missile at Thomas and Trinity, and Thomas changes its direction midair and shoots it in another helicopter. Then Thomas is in an office with a man in a business suit played by Jonathan Groff. You're going back to where it all started, he says, back to the Matrix. Then the title, The Matrix, which fades away, and then resurrections my god that is a really long detailed description but this movie sounds all kinds of wilds and bonkers really diving deep into this matrix world within a matrix world because it feels like they're basically recreating the first movie with different elements i'm honestly extremely confused and i hope i end up enjoying this movie but even if that description sucked for you and i just didn't do a good job reading for it everyone who saw the footage was describing it as bonkers crazy and like the movie is going to be really good. What do you guys think of that description for the new Matrix movie and please let me know some of your thoughts and theories. But of course Warner Brothers could not have a panel without talking about their mainstay and joy the Batman. They did go ahead and show a sizzle reel of the Batman so it's not necessarily a new trailer or a new teaser trailer. A sizzle reel is when they show some footage but also interviews with the director and the cast in between the footage. So here's a description of that footage and what the director Matt Reeves had to say about the Batman. It says here, the feature open with what looks like chaos with Robert Pattinson's Bruce Wayne walking through Gotham as ominous piano music starts to play. Batman has always stood to as one of the major characters of the 20th century, Pattinson says. We see him in the cowl removing it. He says it is radically different from other Batman movies. Reeves says we haven't seen anything grounding it the way year one does. It's not an origin story, but it is Batman in his early days. Footage shows Batman beating up goons set in red light, explosions, police officers, and dark chaos. He's really working out his rage, Pattinson says. All the fights seem very personal. He uses various weapons to beat down enemies. A shot shows Andy Serkis as Alfred. The Batmobile drives with flames coming from its exhaust. We can't wait for you to see the Batman in theaters next year, Reeves says. You can pretty much bet that little featurette and sizzle reel is gonna be shown at DC Fandom in October to the public, but just those little details right there of of Batman beating up thugs in red lighting, using various weapons to fight them. What I kind of love the most is that it's Batman in his early days without going into his origin. I feel like lately it's been a lot of, let's see Batman when he's old. Not that there's nothing wrong with that, but I kind of like me a young Batman. Other ways people describe the footage is that Gotham City looks like a mess. Like this city really is in need of a hero because it just looks like it's filled with criminals. What did you guys think of this description for the Batman footage? But that is all the movie news we currently had going on right now guys i told you it was a fat and juicy side flick hopefully it stayed through all the way let me know which trailer footage got you excited do you have any theories and thoughts leave them down below don't forget to like subscribe follow me on twitter at 3c films or on tiktok at 3c films but as always i'm chris take care